Shabbat Shalom, the Exact and Truth Body Fellowship members, and of course, the beloved Exact and Truth landscape of Body Fellowship believers across that fruited plain. Welcome to Exact and Truth Ministries Saturday Sabbath Facebook Live. I'm your host today, Shepherd Solera, our man, Jr., pastor and leading emissary at Exact and Truth Ministries in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where you bow your heads and pray with me at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day that your mighty hand has made. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, shelter, and clothing. We thank you for protection and provision with regards to our families, our loved ones, our children, our neighbors, our friends, co-workers, even our enemies this morning. We're asking that you come into this conference, into this service, this fellowship. We're asking that you lead and guide us. We're asking that you receive our posture of worship as uh, favorable in your sight. Heavenly Father, we're asking right now, that, <clears throat> excuse me, you re receive our praise, our prayer, our giving of alms, our thanksgiving this morning, Heavenly Father, <clears throat> excuse me, we're grateful for all that you've done. We bless your name. We praise you for who you are. We're asking right now that you remember those who are sick and shut in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the recovery of Bishop and Mom Diana. We're asking that you continue to strengthen them. We thank you for the good news that we've received with regards to Landscape Brother Brother Don Ron Goodrich, and uh, we're asking that you continue to encourage his family, his precious wife, Anita Goodrich, another powerful landscape sister, and continue to work on their behalf. We're asking that you remember Brother Tyrone J. Allen. We thank you for protecting him with regards to the accident and incident that he was in, and we're asking that you strengthen him and bless his recovery right now. Touch the family. We're asking that you remember uh, good brother Deacon James Brown, at Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Harrisburg and his family with regards to the passing of Deacon Brown's sister. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And we're asking that you strengthen and sup and dine with them right now. Remember all those that need remembering everywhere. The landscape sister, Sister Brittany Dude, uh, precious uh, Miss Tamu, good friend of landscape brother, brother Chris McGraw. We're asking that you continue to bless her and strengthen her and allow uh, your will to be made manifest in her life with regards to her health, well-being, and recovery. We're asking right now that you remember uh, precious Auntie Maggie right now and continue to strengthen and encourage her. All those that seek and ask and request prayer, we're asking right now that you intercede and uh, that you intervene and allow your healing grace to pervade. And Heavenly Father, we're asking you to remember this tumultuous world that we're in, this evil age. We believe that we're in uh, the very last days, and we're asking that you allow us to be a city set upon a hill, a city uh, that cannot cannot be hidden, the salt of the earth, and we're asking that you allow, allow us to be the light of this world, and we ask these blessings and many more in uh, that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, Christ's name we pray, amen. Good morning, beloved. Good morning. Blessed Saturday Sabbath to each and every one of you all. Shabbat Shalom. We're glad to be in the presence of the like-minded and believers. Uh, Heavenly Father has been good to us and has strengthened us and we pray that you're in health and uh, that you prosper even as your soul prospers and we believe in the power of prayer and that's why we call out uh, names and, and that's why we pray with regards to the requests that people make because we believe that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail of much. How y'all doing this morning? It's been a while since we've been online because we've been in person and we've been having blessed fellowship. Praise the Most High. I believe we'll only be in person uh, in April one week, the weekend of Saturday Sabbath, April the 15th. We want you to join us there at the Spateria Church of God, Linda Road in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a very, 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 very busy month. We're doing a lot of outreach. We're doing a lot of ministry in a lot of places. The Most High is uh, called us to go and assist and uh, to help encourage and bolster other ministries with regards to the music ministry and so many different other things. So, uh, But we're not attempting to neglect the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some do. So we're just asking that you pay attention to the calendar and uh, praise the Most High. Let's just continue to exact truth and Spread the exacting truth landscape so his kingdom may come and his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We've got a busy day and we don't want to neglect what the Most High have given us to pour into your lives because he's given us something powerful this morning. And we don't want you to miss it. We want you to stay the duration of this live. Hopefully 
We won't be before you long. You all know the tradition at Exacting Truth Ministries on Saturday, Sabbath. We hold up the Holy Writ. Why? Because it contains words of the Most High and words that were left on record for our learning. So symbolically, we hold it up because we look up to his word and not down to our own understanding. Scriptures teach us that we ought to look into the hills from which cometh our help. Our help coming from the Most High that has made the heavens and the earth. So we thank him for his word. We thank him for the wisdom of his word and his way that is passed down through generations and uh, that um, catechetically has been uh, the oral traditions that have been kept and, uh, you know, and then the tablets that were preserved. We just praise the Most High for all of the wisdom, and all of the tools that he's provided us so that uh, his purpose may be manifest in our lives. Amen. All right. If you all would join us, we're going to derive the foundational and scriptural premise for our text this morning from the epistle to the body ecclesia at Philippi. Third chapter of Philippians, we're going to examine verses 12 through 16. This morning, we're going to be referencing the English Standard Version of the English translation of Philippians 3, 12 through 16. Beloved, herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, and it reads as thus. Finally, that's the first verse. Let's go to 12. Praise the Most High. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. A very important word with regards to our text this morning. But I press on to make it my own, Paul the Apostle states, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Hallelujah. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. 14, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature, another very important word this morning, think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God, the Most High God of the Hebrews, of course, will reveal that also to you. And finally, verse 16, only let us hold true to what we have attained. Praise the Most High. May the Most High add a blessing and an enriching to the reading of the Holy Writ this morning, beloved, for the duration of the time that we have provided to us to speak and pour into you this morning. The title of our text is simply titled, Complete. The adjective complete is defined as having all the required or customary characteristics, skills, or the like, consume it, it is defined as. Perfect, yes, I say perfect, in kind or quality. And now the adjective perfect in the English lexicon derives from the Latin etymology, the term perfectus, which is past participle of perficery, which literally means, beloved, to finish bring to completion. Over a period of time in the lexicon and in the language, it has evolved and come to co colloquially mean, and people accept it as that something is infallible or flawless. But in the etymology and the origin of the word, perfect simply means to complete or finish what you start. Beloved, the world of Christ and die is and has been for some time full of all types of modern affirmations and motivationally based hope-filled exhortations. A believer need not to venture far to find or to encounter a wide variety of social media posts, clips, memes, and a variety of messages meant to encourage and motivate all who may come across them. And I'm not attempting to imply that there's anything wrong with that. Don't mistake me this morning, beloved. After all, everyone needs encouragement from time to time. Just take a look at last Saturday Sabbath's powerful message 
when we were meeting in person and oh, what a wonderful time once again we had, but I digress. Lord knows as far as I can tell for as long as I can remember, our faith has been inundated with endless sermons and messages speaking life, prosperity, and just overall positivity into the ears and hopefully lives of whoever will listen. <sighs> if I had a dollar, beloved, for every time I heard someone proclaim that God is ushering us into a brand new season, or that the Most High God is preparing the church for a shift, so get ready. Man, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I would be quite well off financially speaking. Please don't take me wrong. Once again, there is absolutely nothing wrong with positive speaking, with encouraging individuals to have optimistic attitudes or presenting messages that spread hope. The word gospel literally means good news after all. I don't believe the efforts to spread positivity really is the issue. Shepherd man, what are you getting at this morning? It's funny that you ask. I don't believe positivity or a deficit in positivity or the lack of positivity is the issue this morning. After all, the Hamashiach himself, the Christ is quoted in John chapter 10, verse 10, as stating that the purpose for his coming was that we might have life and that we might possess it more abundantly. There is a strong abundance with regards to positive thought and good news surrounding and encompassed in the word that we've been commissioned to spread. So that's not the problem, beloved. Beloved, the issue with Christendom as a whole that I'm attempting to highlight this morning via the inspiration of the Holy Spirit isn't positivity or a lack thereof. Rather, it is the literal application of exhortation and encouragement and the completion of one's purposeful call. That actually, in all reality, is something that proportionately there's a, a, an abundant problem regarding beloved. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you were told and or exhorted to be encouraged and you literally complied. Anybody ever felt down, ever felt in the doldrums, ever lie on the precipice of literally clinical depression? I mean, really, really suffering melancholy in your spirit and then somebody just literally just told you to be encouraged and everything just turned around. When was the last time you were obedient to such a command. Because beloved, when you study the synoptic gospels and Christ speaks encouragement and commands us to be encouraged, we realize and come to an understanding, those of us who exegete scripture correctly, that it is a command. When it's spoken, it's something that you're not just encouraged to do, you're supposed to do. It. But I'm asking you literally to be honest today, when's the last time that happened? I've lived for quite a while. And one of the things that I haven't seen change much at all in concert with the fact that oftentimes when we're exhorted and encouraged, the opposite of that occurs. I've lived for quite a while. And another thing that hasn't changed very much at all is the fact that folks both inside as well as outside of Christendom, of the body ecclesia, still appear to be completely freaked out at the notion or mere mention of the word perfection. Ooh, you better not talk about perfection. People will be real quick to tell you, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Only God is perfect. And that's if they even believe in the Most High. Despite the fact that the Most High is calling for those that believe in him to complete the development of the gifts and talents that he has lent to us, as well as to complete the job assignments regarding his purpose, which he has placed in us and or placed on a, us on a sacred path to accomplish. 
despite these things, that he's put us on a path and expects us to complete that purposeful path. And despite the fact that he expects us to become well-versed, quite skilled, and dare I say, perfected or complete in the gifts and the talents that we have on borrow from him. Despite that, people are still completely and immeasurably freaked out and spooked by the thought that he would want us to perfect, none less just the term perfection. The Christ stated in the Gospel of Matthew, because we live through the word, chapter 5, verse 48, and in this instance, we're going to reference the New International Version, be perfect. <laughs> yeah, read it and weep. It's in the word, I guess, uh, conveniently, like the majority of the body of Christ just find a way to just skip right over that scripture verse. It's literally in the chapter of the Beatitudes. And somehow most people don't make it to the end of the chapter because the Christ states, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. See, that's the reason why I'm not a Judeo-Christian because y'all are delusional. Nobody can be perfect. Once again, I will point out that the original Greek word that the term perfect is transliterated from in Matthew chapter five, verse 48, is the adjective teleos which literally means having reached its end, fully grown, of full age, perfected in the sense that it is complete in all of its parts. Not what you think, was it, beloved? What Jesus is both explaining and exhorting in Matthew 5, 48 is that our heavenly Father himself is complete in every sense of the word and has finished all the things that he has declared that he would do, including the path provided to us to salvation and unmerited favor regarding grace that's provided for his most treasured creation, beloved, which is you and I. So if he's completed his work, guess what? If he's provided grace, and declared that he favors us despite whether or not we can earn it. If he has given a path of salvation through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, then he expects us to take these powerful gifts and to complete that task that is set before us. All we got to do is tell the world of the good news of what happened to us. The Christ therefore encourages all those that were present in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48 to witness his legendary sermon on the mount. All those that were present there, he encourages them to walk in the example set by the creator and to fully ripen, to fully mature, to come to completion and to bring their purposed tasks and the abundant, most high given potential he's placed in their lives and faith to completion, not to stop midway, not to become passive in the middle of your compliance and obedience to his will, but to finish, beloved. Loved ones, let me ask you a very important question this morning. In all honesty, can you say that you've pushed your life and your life's potential to the apex, to the very pinnacle, of what you believe that you're capable of. Yeah, I just wanted to give everybody a second because that's a powerful question today. Listen, so much blame gets placed on someone besides ourselves in far too many instances when things fail to be completed in our lives. Yes, this person's fault or this person didn't provide this information that this individual wasn't truthful or my mentor or my guardian or my parent, they fell short of whatever. It's easy to point fingers, but have you lived up to your potential? I'm not even talking about what he sees in you. Do you believe that you've done everything that you could do with regards to your capabilities? Yeah, 
It's easy to blame other people. Or when it appears as though valuable opportunities never present themselves to us, Lord knows I can write a book on that myself. Heavenly Father, continue to strengthen us and forgive me for some of my past thoughts with regards to that matter. Yeah, when valuable opportunities never present themselves to us in the same manner in which they appear to present themselves in the lives of others. Seems like all of a sudden we begin to lack accountability with regards to what we're culpable for. Question, are you exhausted because of how hard you've worked and pushed your potential and limits? Or are you exhausted simply from a lethargic attitude and approach to your life as well as the achievement of levels of mediocrity that literally suck the life out of your existence? Listen, beloved, laziness actually breeds more of the same. You ever slept so long until you couldn't get up? I better keep moving. When you find yourself depressed and lacking motivation, guess what? And I'm not trying to depress you with this message. We're just speaking truth. When you find yourself depressed and lacking motivation, I need to tell you something very poignant this morning. Doing nothing isn't the antidote to how you're feeling or how you will recover from those down feelings. You can't do more of the same and recover from a place of depression or a lack of motivation. No matter how difficult it may seem at the time, getting up and moving actually is the only thing that will begin to steer you in a different direction than the one that you're going and the feelings that you feel. It's the only thing that's going to steer you away from the negativity that you're feeling. When was the last time you executed a plan and regimen designed to improve every facet of your life? Every facet, Shepherd Man, every facet of your life. A lot of times we look in a macro sense when we hear messages like this, but what about the small details? Now, when's the last time that you executed a plan? Stop looking over at your neighbor. Stop deflecting and thinking about, well, I know my children didn't do what I asked them to do the last. No, I'm talking about you today. Every individual. When's the last time you came up with a plan of self-improvement and a plan uh, designed to reach the very top of what the most high has given you or what you're capable of? Everybody, listen, everybody ain't a genius, but yet and still, when's the last time you improved? what the Most High has given you. How much life on a daily basis do you speak to and into yourself with regards to your own affirmations? Additionally, how much follow-through, literal follow-through do you practice regarding your own, once again, affirming of oneself positively? This life can become Lord knows, truly exhausting. Somebody are already tired of listening to me this morning, but I'm, I dare you to hang in there because it's something powerful in the end of this. Actually, the whole thing is powerful, but I digress again. Life can become truly exhausting rather quickly if we are solely expecting to be motivated by the things that we encounter on a daily basis. How many people know that sometimes from day to day, it seems like that we simply rinse and repeat. So if you're looking every day for something to be motivational regarding your life on a grand scale, then you're going to be disappointed. Sometimes all we can hope for in this crazy life that we live in, in this world that surrounds us, sometimes the only thing we can hope for, the best that we can hope for, is that we rinse and repeat and, and, and nothing dramatic happens in our life. Lord have mercy. We're praying for the families people who continue to be victimized by school shootings and the like. So sometimes all we can dare to pray for is a day similar to the day that we had yesterday, if that day was reasonably peaceful. So if you're looking for something dramatic to happen every day that's going to serve as a basis for your motivation, then you may be disappointed. Or, beloved, if you're looking for the people around you to constantly motivate you. For example, a lot of progress in life, both naturally and spiritually, 
actually is tied and tethered to a vigorously repetitive grind. I'm going to say that again for those in the back. A lot of progress in life. I know that might not be what you're looking to hear. It may not be your cup of tea this morning, but a great degree and modicum of progress in life, both naturally and spiritually, is tied to how vigorously you work at it. What type of grind you have, what type of determination you have to simply be better in all of the things that have been provided and even the things that you have hope for. It's easy to play the blame game. There's absolutely zero cost to pointing the finger at someone or something else. But how much effort have you put in with regards to accomplishing everything that the Heavenly Father has purposed and tasked for you to complete? If knowledge, schooling, and better educating yourself is a necessity in the process and journey of improving and perfecting your chances and odds at succeeding, have you pursued and obtained the necessary schooling, knowledge, better education, and counsel? I'm not just referring to a job assignment or uh, college credits or degrees. Far too often, folks just go on autopilot in critical personal relationships. How about that, beloved? Have you obtained the critical knowledge, education, counseling, and help necessary to become complete as a spouse or as a parent or dare I say even as a friend? That's food for thought, beloved, this morning. Folks struggle to be proper friends, for example, to one another. Absolutely battle regarding that in this day and time, at least from my prism and outlook. Half the time, many people find themselves actually sharing secrets and private intimate details of their lives and struggles with total strangers. Where's your friends? I tell you what, we need to stop sharing so much of our business online. King Solomon wrote in his book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 24, and in this we're going to reference this example, the New International Version of the English translation of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, which states, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Beloved, I implore you this morning, put the work in and go find your true friends. It may only be one or two, but where are they? And the best way to start, I know because some of y'all are like, huh, my friends are fair weather, or I got to go it alone, or all I have to worry about is me. Beloved, put the work in to find those true friends. And the best way to start is by practicing being a better one yourself. If the age old adage, practice makes perfect, is true, when was the last time you did it? Did what, Shepherd Man? Practiced. Practice what? Practice being cleaner. Practice being nicer. Practice being more kind. Not just practice something like singing or playing an instrument. When was the last time you practiced choosing patience over being quick-tempered? Lord, is somebody praying for Shepherd Man this morning? When was the last time you practiced acts and deeds of kindness? Not just to some random stranger or somebody panhandling in the middle of Cameron Street, but even to those closest to you. Practice acts of kindness to your neighbor, to your loved ones, those that live in close proximity to you. Which surprisingly enough, many if not most people often find themselves taken for granted. Who? The person you love? Yeah, most of the time that's the person that you most take for granted. How you know they don't need to be told that they're beautiful or that you love them or, you know, buy a card for nothing other than the fact that you want it to or, you know, to tell them that they did a good job or to encourage them to keep pressing or, you know, to ju just affirmations. To, we, we take one another for granted. I don't know why it makes us feel so good to put a couple of quarters in the hand of somebody that probably lied to you. I just want some coffee. I ain't seen crack flavored coffee yet. I'm not saying everybody that asks and panhandles and has a need out there, because even those that do and they lie, they still have needs. They just not getting met. 
But Lord knows, we feel so good about ourselves oftentimes. I done did the work of the Lord. I done done a charitable act. And we neglecting one another right there in the space where we live. My Lord, does somebody got to put on sackcloth and ashes and hold a can in your own house to be able to get the positive and proper encouragement and exhortation that they need to make it? Why do you think the most high put us in one another's lives? I better move on. When the last time you practiced that? When was the last time you practiced saving money? How many more lines I got left because somebody going to leave this stream? When was the last time you practiced saving valuable resources? There's a lot of warnings. I praise the Most High for Auntie Maggie. She's right up on it all the time. Sitting Shepherd Man, you know, uh, clips and articles, man. Listen, quiet as it's kept. Y'all better pay attention. Something is going on with world, not just local, international banking. And we got to trust in the Most High. We don't say that for fear. But listen, we need to be Josephic. Y'all know those old messages back at the beginning of the pandemic? Where's your storehouse? We don't need to spend everything. We don't know how much longer money is going to be valuable nonetheless. So when's the last time you saved some of it? When's the last time you practiced being a blessing to someone? Simply because the Most High told you to be a blessing. Charitable actions and deeds is how the Heavenly Father provides an example to us and shows us how he literally loves us and not just tells us, but substantiates his love for us through his actions towards us. The word transliterally in English in the New Testament that represents his love, which is like agapeo, the love that he has for those in his body, is charity. We need to begin to do the same, one towards another. What? Be charitable. Because he said so. I ain't giving them nothing. He's looking for us to become complete in these aspects, beloved. Mighty word, I praise the most high in the Holy Spirit. It came to me first before we could pour it out on you all. Beloved, in closing, as we got a lot to do in a short time. So we're going to close this morning. The most high creator of all things expects his chosen and elected people to arrive at completion. Yes, in this lifetime. <laughs> to complete what he has called you and purposed for you to do. To finish the task that you've started. And that he has began in you. Heavenly Father, Lord, please give us the strength today to become complete, to mature, to become fully grown. How many life projects and challenges have we abandoned at this point? Right in the middle, just left them. Life project looked like a ghost town. How many of our lives and spirits and souls even looked like a construction site that had to be abandoned because the rest of the financing and funding fell through midway through the construction process. You got cranes there where people used to work and you know you get uh, windows that haven't been filled in with glass. That's what our life and our purpose looks like because we've abandoned them midway. Beloved, we got to get back to task. We've got to complete what we've started. If he's completed a work in us, and through us, we have to be compliant with regards to that call and that work. The Most High, and don't get me wrong at all, is not asking for you to be infallible. That means without flaw. If we were infallible and flawless, we wouldn't need him. That's not what this message is about this morning. Rather, the Father is asking us to become complete. And that's something that we have to put in the work and the grind to do. The Heavenly Father isn't calling for goats today. Everything is about an online goats today. The Heavenly Father is not calling for the greatest that ever did it. He already knows who that is. It's not us, it's him. He's not asking for the greatest, loved ones. He's asking for your greatest. What's the best that you can offer? The hymn says, what shall I render unto the most high God for all of his blessings? He wants your greatest, the absolute best and most complete that you can possibly be. And if you haven't worked at it for a while, then today is not 
so much of a rebuke as it is an encouragement to get back to work because there is work to do. There's always work to do on us. And that requires great effort, but not only that, it requires prayer. It requires consecration, which means setting yourself apart at times, getting in a quiet place and reflecting and meditating. It requires and oftentimes causes falling and getting up again. That's a part of the process. It oftentimes involves failing only to continue to try, not giving up and eventually succeeding in his time and his season for your life. Don't get discouraged because you feel like you're midway through your life or you're even an older individual. At this past Wednesday's Wednesday Bible study and question and answer, the Most High provided a great revelation with regards to people sometimes that struggle with their purpose. Look at Sarah. How is her purpose in her life, wife of Abraham, not providing the seed of Abraham that led ultimately to the coming of the Hamashiach? She had Isaac and had him at a ripe old age. At the thought of giving birth to the succession of Father Abraham, who the Most High had called to expedite his will and to be his chosen people, she laughed at the notion that she would be able to give birth at her age. But look at how the rounding of her purpose, the reason for why she exists literally, came in her latter years. Beloved, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Just because it seemed like you haven't figured it out doesn't mean that his purpose is not going to be made manifest in you. But it's in his time and his season. We got to hold on to that. Until then, work on you. Are you going to tell me with a straight face today that you have nothing left to work on? I know they're saying online, take it easy, good vibes only. But beloved, they don't have it right. Sometimes <laughs> less is not more. A lot of times less is more, but sometimes less is not more. Sometimes you got to do more in order to achieve. Stop fearing and avoiding and being ignorant towards the term perfection. We define it today out of scripture. We define it today etymology, etymology, in etymology. Say the right word, Shepard. So we need to depart with this understanding. Beloved, and we're going to pray. If he can't say himself, the Father, that we're complete today, then that means we have more work to do. And this is very important to note. Time is of the essence. So one of the worst things we can do is actually recognize, listen, shepherd man, while you eating a bonbon, you ain't said nothing that I don't know. I know there's work to do. Yeah, but have you seen what time it is? Time is of the essence. Won't you get to work on completing that which he has called and enabled you to do? Amen. Let's pray that he gives us strength to do so this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this powerful and encouraging lesson. Powerful truths. Heavenly Father, help us to focus in on the meat. Help us to focus in on the fish and not to struggle and choke upon the bones this morning. Help us to embody the very essence of what you have called us to do, realizing that you're with us and lo, you'll be with us even until the end of the age and take that confidence and run towards and press towards that mark of the high calling of the most high God of the Hebrews through Christ Jesus. Those that need strength today, those that seek and desire forgiveness and repent for not being compliant in times past, for being slothful, for being discouraged and turned around because of a lack of satisfaction with regards to how life was progressing thus far. We believe and will never be remiss to add that that forgiveness is nigh them because of that powerful sacrifice of your son, the Hamashiach, that came and completed his task with regards to uh, opening up a door of grace and providing a path of salvation so that we might be saved. The original word, sozos, meaning rescued and preserved until such a time that you return for us. Save us and those that believe. Forgive us and restore us and protect us. And we thank you and believe that it is so, because right now, 
the son, the Hamashiach, is sitting on your right hand, making intercession for each and every one of us that believe, of which this morning's powerful lesson is an example, we believe, of sin intercession. And we ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, in the Christ's name we pray. We're asking before we conclude this prayer that you remember all the names on our prayer list and all those that we may not have encountered with regards to our prayer list that are in need of you, Heavenly Father, provide as only you can. And we ask these blessings once again in your great name. Amen. Listen, we love you. It's not a whole lot you can do about it. Join us this week at another Exacting Insight into the Word Wednesday Bible study and question and answer. We have an awesome time every week in person in fellowship. If you've missed it, then you want to make it to this Bible study and question and answer this open forum. Put it in your schedule. Until then, join us next week in another online Saturday Sabbath. And until then, Shabbat Shalom, beloved. Have a blessed and peaceful rest of your Sabbath.